Now for the last part, we'll be talking about the following. There are two main types of types, or should I say family, of MRI sequences. The other ones are just a variation of these two. These two families are the spin echo and the gradient echo. They are different. They are different in the way they produce the echo. For the spin echo, the echo is produced using a 180 degree refocusing pulse. For the gradient echo, notice here that there is no 180 degree refocusing pulse. Now, how is an echo made then? The echo is produced by a magnetic gradient here, represented by letter G, which you can see in our MRI box. So, what is a magnetic gradient? We can think of magnetic gradients as something like this. They are magnetic uh, beams fired in either the x-axis, y-axis, or the z-axis perpendicular to the patient. Now, take a look at this. Visualize here that we have this patient who will lie supine on an, within an MRI magnet. We can then control what magnetic gradients can be sent to the X, Y, or Z axis. So, this is a gradient sent in the Y, the uh, the x, I mean, the y-axis and the x-axis. You might ask, why do we need to send gradients? Aren't the RF pulses enough? The answer is this. If we didn't specify any magnetic gradient, the MRI machine will ask us. Will we hit first the head part, the bottom part, or do we hit the entire part of the body. Of course, we're not going to do that. We're not going to uh, hit RF pulses on the entire body at the, enti at the entire time that the patient is within the magnet. So we're going to specify then a slice gradient. So if this is a person, we need to specify which slice the RF pulse would uh, first hit. So, for example, if a patient is lying supine here, like this patient, and we want to take images in the axial plane, in what direction should we send the slice gradient? So, the correct answer is this one. They're lying supine. We're going to send the slice gradient here in the there slice gradient in the z axis just like this one. If we want to image in the coronal plane, coronal plane of the patient, we send the slice gradient through the y axis. And if we want to image in the sagittal plane, we set the slice gradient in the x-axis. So next, uh, so these two images are both taken in order to highlight water or edema. Can you tell the difference? And what can you comment about the signal of the subcutaneous fat here? Can you also comment on the signal of the marrow? Of the marrow infarcts in both cases? And then we'll come back to this later. We are familiar with STIR or short tau inversion recovery. 
This, are, uh, this is an image which would null the fat and highlight the edema. This is a variation of the pulse sequence, the spinecho sequence we saw earlier, and this is what we call a magnetization prepared sequence. So let's start with this pulse sequence. It pretty much looks like a spin echo. We have a 90 degree excitatory pulse, then 180 degree refocusing pulse, followed by the echo. But since this is a magnetization prepared sequence, it has a twist. There's this twist, 180 degree pulse. So this is how it is done. So our goal is to make sure that the fat will not contribute to the signal, right? So imagine this is the fat proton. So we need to trick the fat protons to look in another way. So how do we do that? So we're going to hit it with an inversion pulse, this one. 180 degree pulse here. Which should then bring the proton to this direction. Now, the fat will then want to go back to its original position. So in the process of going back to its original position, say, while it is still here, we would want to immediately fire a 90 degree pulse. So when we fire the 90 degree pulse at this time, the fat still hasn't regained its longitudinal magnetization. It doesn't get hit with the 90 degree pulse and hence will not contribute to the signal in the image. The time elapsed from the inversion pulse and the 90 degree pulse is called the inversion time. So naturally, the inversion time should be shorter than the T1 relaxation time of the substance that you want to null. Like for in this example, in this instance, fat. The same principle is also used for flare images but with a different uh, inversion time.